If you look on the internet, there's all kinds of things available, that offered. The problem is that none of those treatments have been run through a clinical trial. And so the whole point of a clinical trial is to establish safety and whether it works. And people who are being offered treatments that are entirely experimental or unproven outside of the context of a clinical trial have none of the safety, none of the protection of a clinical trial. So they're not, they're often not fully consented in the, to the standards that an ethics committee would expect. They're, they're very rarely given adequate follow-up and if they develop an, a side effect or a po possible adverse event later on after their treatment, there's no accountability for that. So nobody um, is going to ring them up at the six month time point and say, so how are you going? Have you had any further, further problems? Come back in and see us, let us examine you clinically and see whether we think there's any um, long term bad outcomes from the treatment that we gave you. The other very concerning thing that the medical um, community has tried on many occasions to address with um, experimental stem cell therapists, shall we put, um, is that uh, the cells that are injected into these patients are often not characterised. Not, certainly not to the standards that say a, um, a regulatory body like the, the US Food and Drug Administration or the Therapeutic Goods Administration in Australia would be not to their standards. So, um, and the concerns with stem cell therapy and the, the particular safety concerns that we have relate to the very nature of stem cells. So stem cells, because they're able to form any cell in the body, theoretically, have the capacity to form cancer cells um, or have the capacity to form the wrong kind of tissue. Unless the treatment is t tested properly and unless the cells that are put in are absolutely known to the nth degree what they are, what we think they do, there is a risk that that will happen. Um, there is a risk that patients can form cancers it, anywhere in their body after a stem cell treatment if, if it wasn't a really defined cell that was injected in. Um, and there are, now defined, there are now described cases around the world of people who've gone off to have a stem cell therapy in one of these relatively unregulated centres who've developed cancers or um, what we call ectopic tissue formation where the tissue, uh, an odd tissue is formed that shouldn't be there. Um, and you would have to relate that to their stem cell treatment. What I always say to my patients is, you're the boss. This is your body and, and I respect your decision to undertake this treatment and I understand where you've come from in terms of wanting to go there because I understand the desperation and I understand um, the, the need to seek alternatives if, if conventional medicine has told you there's no other options. So this is very much within your rights to go and do. Um, I would give them the list of questions that I think that they should ask um, and I would offer to give them feedback on the answers that they've been given as well. I have had patients who've chosen to go um, overseas for experimental therapies um, and I have been very unsatisfied with the level of follow-up that they, they've been given and so I have tried to fill in the breach and I think as clinicians if our patients do choose to do this it's pointless um, vilifying them, it's pointless, it's, it's pointless judging them for that decision. The best that we can do is look after them as best we can. One um, patient of mine has had what I think is an adverse event, a very nasty adverse event from a stem cell therapy and again all I can do is now look after him and try and treat the complication that he's developed as best I can because I know that the treatment that he had, the, the group that treated him overseas aren't taking any responsibility for that. The other thing I would say about experimental stem cell therapists overseas at the moment is that they are very cagey about their results and their methods. Sometimes they claim that the reason why they won't share their methods with the, with the rest of the scientific community is because they want to patent them. Um, 
that's a fairly weak argument and I don't think it's a particularly ethical argument. Um, and other times I fear that they're very guarded about their results and their, um, their methods because in fact they're not sure that they can validate the claims that they're making. Um, the internet has been a great boon for people um, offering these stem cell therapies and um, unfortunately nobody regulates what goes on the internet. So you can claim anything and no one's going to pull you up and say that can't be possibly be true. So um, again, I think the problem is if people decide to move out of the regular medical um, and scientific community and sort of work essentially on their own, um, the desperate patients will flock to them because they've been told by the regular scientific and medical community that there is nothing more that we can do. Um, and so it's natural to turn to them, but in fact if, if, there's, if, if what they do isn't safe, there's no way of knowing. And that's what's really, really concerning for us. The first question that a patient would need to ask, and usually they already know the answer to this question, is are there any other treatments that are available? Um, and how might this treatment compare to, the, tri to the, the trial treatment that I'm considering? The next question that they need to ask is what are the potential side effects of the treatment that you want to give me on this trial? Um, and what would you do about it if I did get side effects? Um, how long would you follow me up for after I've had this treatment? What are the possibilities of long-term side effects? And how likely is it that there might be side effects that no one knows about yet? And that's often related to how new this treatment is. Um, you, I would also want to know things like um, how, how invasive, how uncomfortable is this treatment going to be for me? What are you asking me to do in terms of getting the treatment into me? So for instance, in a stem cell treatment, it might be an injection of stem cells into a vein, or it might be something as invasive as in injecting stem cells into your spinal cord or your brain, if, you've got a, if, if that's the kind of disease area that you're treating. Um, what are the side effects of the procedure that you're gonna to use to get those cells into me? And what care would you provide for me if I do develop side effects from being given these cells? The treatment is experimental, that there's no guarantee that the treatment will work, and that there is a chance that the treatment might actually cause serious side effects that are either known or unknown. My preference is that you always give the, the consent form to the patient and give them a reasonable amount of time to think about it. And I always encourage patients to take a consent form and take it away, talk to their local doctor about it, talk to their friends and their family, look on the internet, and then write down a list of questions and come back to the investigating doctor and say, these are my questions, these are my concerns, what do you think?